All right, so I got a whole bunch of just stuff to go over uh, with you, which is what we've been doing, right? Um, I'm gonna just run this one under maintenance, which is a little bit more just stuff I think I thought of at the end. And you may have to make your own notes. But when I wrote this, this stuff, I thought, ah, oh, you know, this would be great to talk about. Maybe not necessarily in your, but you can write it down. So maintenance. I wrote, check the aircraft records for replacement or modification of the tack, changes of the propeller model, engine model, or installation changes. You know, at that point, I was thinking about, you know, when you do an annual inspection, so much of an annual that falls on the IA is about paperwork. You know, when, it's, when you're doing a 100-hour more as a mechanic, you're focused in on the maintenance side of things. But then, and, and also in an annual, don't, don't get me wrong there, but the annual includes a massive paperwork search. You know, does this exact engine model match what the type certificate data is? Does this exact prop match the, you know, what it's, and so you're always looking at these things. You're always looking for that mismatch. And that's how the FAA usually gets people that's usually what gets them in trouble is some stupid little thing you know and an uh, owner does something stupid they crash an airplane the fa shows up this crash and goes this prop never belonged on that airframe who signed this off I'm like well the prop it ran out of gas but you know you just get drug up in it you know and that's what happens um let me see um i have uh you can write that i'm not gonna write all this stuff verify proper rpm restrictions are accurately marked on the prop uh, I'm sorry, on the TAC, instrument panel, placard, TCDS, and all that stuff. So, also is an IA. Like, I, last an annual I did on a, on a plane, I had never done an annual on this plane before, and so it required me to actually get the pilot operating handbook, and there's a section in there that has all of the placards. You know, it takes a long time on a twin to go around, okay, where's this placard? Sometimes they're hidden. It's like, oh, great, you know. Okay, well that doesn't have it. Oh no, it's actually up here on the ceiling. Okay, got the placard. And you have to, you know, every single placard because you don't want to miss the one that has, you know, no operations within this range. People change out tachometers. They don't put the proper labels back on. Uh, so you have to check for all of that stuff. So you check your POH for placards and your type certificate data sheet. I think it's note three, section three has all the placards on it. Uh, what else? Check your tack. I always check the accuracy of the tack. I assume my base assumption is the tachometer is wrong. I start from that point of view. Uh, when I bought my plane, it's funny the guy I bought it from. He's a real nice guy, but a bit of a cowboy. You know, I'm like, so you know what power settings do you use? Dude, I just go. <laughs> Great. Um, you know, and then you know I take off and I'm flying. You know, we got. Man, you are well past red line. Oh, shit, I am. You know, so I pull it back. I'm like, well, the tack's probably wrong, but, you know, I can't. I don't have a way to check it now. So, yeah, it was off. So, it was, it reads about 150 high. But, you know, I tell proven otherwise. Sometimes it's the other way around. You know, sometimes you think you're at red line and you're 150 over. You know, I was lucky with mine. It just read over and it was actually low. So, um, you always got to check that. You know, I told you check it with, you can buy the handheld tack checkers. You know, you mm -hmm. calibrate them with a the fluorescent light and all that stuff. And, you know, uh, let's see. I have a note in here. It says, check accuracy of mechanical tachometers at intervals not to exceed 60 months. That's every five years. I did every annual. Every annual, I would check the accuracy. Um, I worked with one guy. Everything is direct as you guys are starting to see. They're a little difficult, right, to comprehend? Um, some of you are saying, oh, I don't know, I didn't. I just copied the person next to me. But, you know, if you actually did it, you realize they can be a little difficult. And you've only seen easy ones. The first time I got my IA, because I told you guys I didn't want it after a while because I wasn't doing anything with it, and then I went back and got it. But the first time, you went down to the local FA office, and they put you through the ringer. I mean, he made me look up helicopter ADs that are just so far out there, which, <laughs> now I think about it, then when I got the second time and I just went down to a test center, guess what the ADs were? I mean, absolutely the most complex helicopter situations ever. It'd be a multi-part thing. It's like, well, this part was replaced at this many hours, and this part was replaced 
with in this many, but this one had method C done, which requires a repetitive based upon the other two. And you're like, what? You know, and that's that's what the IA test is like. Yeah, there's there's no, you know, well, what's the torque on a bolt? No, it's it's all reading comprehension. Um, oh yeah. So, but anyway, the point I was going to make is so I had one IA I worked with. He honestly, he, he knew his limitations, and God bless him for this. He would write down the hub part number, hub serial number. He would call, he had a relationship with the prop shop, and it, it, it's good to have relationships with somebody. And, you know, and he said, you know, I just think he sent all of his business to one prop shop. So they knew this is their customer now. He would just call up, here's my serial number, here's my hub, what do I need to know? You know, part number, serial numbers, what, what ADs are on this prop? And they would just tell him flat out, okay, they got this one, this one. Just take it off, send it in, you know, whatever had to be done. So, um, so yeah, when in doubt, do it. Don't be afraid. They're, co they're complicated. Uh, and sometimes one word will throw somebody off. I had one guy who got in trouble because he didn't know what the word subsequent meant. You know, he thought it meant everything before instead of everything after. So, um, maintenance for wood props. I wrote down, wood propellers require delicate maintenance, and they do. Cost is about, oh, it's got to be old now, 1600 to 2000 for a low horsepower prop. That's not bad, 2000 bucks for a prop. That's only, what, less than, less than half of an AMU there, Michael? Yes. These are $5,000. <laughs> well, you got to inspect, obviously. For, okay, remember this. What are we going to inspect for? Yes, okay. Can DME ask you? I've been, been over this with you guys, right? If DME asks yeah. you to inspect anything. You're not going to, I'm done. <laughs> no, expecting for cracks. What else? Well, wood props don't leak too much. Damage. Security. What's security? Proper safety wire. Yeah. Corrosion. Wood corrosion is terrible. Uh, cracks, delamination, dents. Termites. Warping, damaged Termites. bolt holes, crushed mounting areas. Mm. Big with wood props. Um, who should perform the repairs on those wood props or any props? Props. Prop shops. Prop shop. Prop shop. Uh, Revarnish as needed. What happens if you put too much varnish on one? What if only one side needs varnish? Uh, put, put some on, put the on the other side. On the other side you do both sides. Yep. Because it wouldn't be unreasonable that a propeller sits in a certain way where maybe sun hits it on one side more than the other. They're like, ah, oh, this side's fine. Nope. Um, uneven varnishing causes imbalance. imbalance. What color is the face of all props? Black. black. What, what black? Matte black. black. Try black again. Black. Flat. Flat black. Flat black. Why is it not, like, why, why is it specifically flat and not black or matte or? Flicker vertigo? Were you here for that story? Yes. Yes, it, it flashes at you. It has to be specifically flat. Yes, otherwise you get flash. It reflects back the sun. Oh. Yeah. I did. I painted mine with, uh, I tried something and it was, it seemed like it was flat, but it wasn't. It was a little bit too shiny and it was obnoxious. I had to go back and repaint it. Huh. Yeah. Um, yeah, critical on all props prevent flicker vertigo. Uh, check the torque often on wood props. Follow Sensenich instructions very carefully. Make sure to follow the proper torque pattern. You don't go around in a circle. I've seen props ruined from somebody doing that. Torque all the way, torque all the way, torque. Ooh, it doesn't track anymore. What do you do? Um, yeah, they're AN4 bolts. 140 inch pounds was the max. It's not much for a prop. Check every... Twenty-five to fifty hours on a wood prop, wow. or at each environmental change. Environmental change. Like if it rains. They said environmental change. What do you think it means? Well, yes. Whatever you think it means, you're probably right. Every time it rains, every time the weather changes. I had a customer who, you know, I told him this stuff, and he made me do it. He would just call every, I don't know, eight weeks. Hey, go re retorque my prop, please. Sure. 
you get calls like that, you, you got to go over to their hangar. Well, I was out of Clarksburg. It was only like from here to the bathroom away. It was where his plane was parked, so it wasn't that big a deal. Out there peeing in the weeds anyway. He might as well do his prop. Um, that did not happen. Um, torque. I'm just going to write this one because it's fun. All right, so you guys doing the large uh, ground adjustable prop that that's a propeller that would have been like on a Stearman airplane they're actually steel blades they're hollow so that's why you, there's special notes in the about no repairs are allowed to them in the uh, FARs so the torque on a Stearman this was fun um, and this is a quote torque we'll do here torque torque may be applied which allows me to think that it may not be it's a very specific torque. And I'm very sorry about this, but you're excluded from this conversation at this point. Well, for two reasons. <laughs> She's not a man. I don't think she weighs 175 pounds. <laughs> pounds using a 31 inch rod. It's page 79, right there on the manual. There's your specific torque. <laughs> now, if somebody is really smart, I guess you'd come up with an, ex you'd come up with an Excel spreadsheet for every weight possible and what the rod had to be. <laughs> yeah. Um, if you do the math, that's 450 foot pounds. Why couldn't we have just said that? It's too, too easy. <laughs> yes, 450 foot pounds would be nice. And what do you do after you're done torquing said prop with your man? Is there anybody in here that weighs 175 pounds? Exactly. You, you're, you're a very valuable man. We cannot put props on Stearman's without you, buddy. <laughs> Make sure nothing happens to him. Awesome. Protecting. We should put him in a little box with velvet. Wait, that's a coffin. No. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that was all wood prop stuff. Uh, maintenance for metal props. How am I doing on time? What do we got here? Did that. All right, tracking. I did talk about tracking. Notice how they have a cowling fixture. Well, that way if the plane moves around, if you have a plane that's on wheels and it moves around where you're checking tracking, it's going to throw it off. So it's one nice thing about attaching something to cowling. The bad side of that is you've attached something to the cowling. Um, yeah, wood block, checking. To, so they're not doing it at the tip. They're actually doing it like at the bottom of the tip. But notice how they're checking it kind of up the prop a little bit. You, know, you can do that. Um, balance. Well, since this slide is here, I guess I can just go forward to balance. Imbalance conditions can be exaggerated as RPM increases. So if you have the shaking gets worse. Oh, man. I overhauled, I think it was an 0300. And we didn't have a uh, test club for the 0300 for this horsepower. So I ordered a brand new one out of this company. And so I built the engine and we trucked it up to our other shop in Sacramento. And, uh, I, you know, it was the brand new wood, wood test club. And I sent it up there. And the mechanic calls like, Kevin, man, there's something wrong with this engine. It just shakes so bad. I'm like, well, shakes bad, you know, check the mags. The mag's okay. I mean, he, you know, we spent like, you know, an hour over the phone. Let me just go down there and just check it. So I finally go down there, get the plane started. Blah, 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 blah. And then, you, boy, you added throttle. It just got worse and worse. I'm like, what? Yeah, tape measure? It's just a tape measure. I'm like, the hell, man? The hub was like two inches off center. Yeah, I just called the company. This thing's sorry, it's coming back to you. You obviously are inept at building propellers. I don't want one. So, uh, balance is, so you can do balance both statically and dynamically. This would be static balance, as I'm showing you here, because it's not on the engine, it's not running. Um, let me see. Balancing is done on the balance stand. We do have one here, and if you want to do it, you're welcome to do it. Uh, arbor sits on a knife edge. The propeller is placed on the hub on these knife edges. Might be worth your time to go in the NDT room and look at look at it. Cool. Uh, it's it's all right. Obviously, <laughs> I, I'm not a fan. I'm more, but it's it's tedious. 
Um, obviously, you can't have a room with high ventilation because it makes the propeller go like a fan. So I can't remember if it's assembled or if it's stacked up against the wall right now. Is it assembled? Okay. Uh, let's see. So, yeah, edges must be perfectly level in a room with no air movement. If the prop is balanced, there's no movement. You can put it in any position you want, and it will stay exactly there. <laughs> you have to check the balance in several uh, different positions. Vertical, this is confusing, vertical imbalance. If the propeller is vertically out of balance, the heavier of the part will rotate down and the blades will be horizontal. Yes. <laughs> Vertically out of balance, the heavier part will rotate. The blades will be... No, that doesn't make sense. A prop out of vertical balance will not stay vertical. There we go. Prop out of vertical balance will not stay vertical. But what if you have this blade down here is 10 pounds heavier than that one? It stays vertical. Yeah. Really Done. That's you have to check it this way, then that way. So um, horizontal imbalance. If the uh, horizontal... Um, yeah, if it's out of horizontal balance, it will not stay horizontal. I just have a bad word in here. Bad word? I uh, just, no, not a bad word. Um, obviously, with a three-blade prop, you got to check it in three ways, but I think that's, that's the end of that. Uh, we'll talk more about balancing it. Some propellers have places where you can screw weights onto them. Some have nothing. So all you can do is add paint or washers on the prop bolts down the hub. Um, we'll talk more ne next week about, um, name eludes me, um, they're, bolt, they're hollow bolts that take welch bolts, welch bolts where you can actually stuff a, a lead wool inside of them and solder over them. So there's different ways to do it. You just have to kind of look for the, what that prop wants. Not usually done out in the field, but you can. Uh, let's see. Add weight. Uh, wood props, you can add solder to the tip. Some manufacturers can allow you to grind off a little bit. I'm not a fan of that one. Uh, then, of course, there's dynamic balance, which I've talked about quite a bit. About You run it on the airplane. You guys will learn more about that. What else I got here? Ah, these are bad things. Concrete <coughs> Uh, that looks like it's hollow or something. I don't know, but transverse cracks mean you must throw it away. Um, prop tips are painted high color orange so that. Thank you. Somebody. The, the, this paint slid right off anyway. This is what most props tend to look like. And people get used to seeing this to the point where they don't think much about it. They're like, it's normal, right? I, you know, I dressed my paint, my prop, and painted it, and somebody's like, damn, man, you got a brand new prop. I'm like, no, I just take care of it. <laughs> so how do you dress that out? Yeah. Oh, yeah, certified mechanic may perform some maintenance, prevent a maintenance, alteration, appliance. This is just what it says in 6581. Um, excluding major repairs to, and I tried to highlight it. Excluding major repairs to major alterations of props and any repair alteration instruments. So we covered that. Um, Appendix A, major alterations. Just some examples. Changes in hub design, blade design. If you're changing the design, definitely. Changes in governor, governor control. Um, major repairs. This is worth noting. Um, shortening of blades. Um, repairing steel hubs. So I would consider anything you do to a steel hub outside of paint as a repair. Um, repairs to composite, any repairs to composite blades. Um, so if you got a rock ding and a composite blade, that's a? Yep. Yeah. Um, repair of prop governors. Remember that, because you guys are gonna be disassembling prop governors, doing an oral on it. You can't touch them, no repairs. <laughs> I don't. I don't because it's, I'm not allowed to. Uh, you can thank me that we're not getting into that. Uh, if you don't like working on props, you want to get one of these because it only has one blade. Wait, is that, that's actual big. 
Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that was, I believe it was the Germans experimented that it's uh, technically, <laughs> there's, there's a problem with propellers being inefficient because one blade is always in the wake of the other one. So this resolved that issue, but I heard that that's, so. That looks very dangerous. Yeah. It's very, it's like very exciting. Oh yeah, I used to talk about propellers hate you. They want to kill you, so. I know my parents came down that hangar when I was working on my airplane and my stepdad, he's just kind of hanging on the prop. And I was I'm like, I had the, the spark plugs out or the ignition harness off at the time. I was like, otherwise I'm like, okay. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Oh, All right, my favorite part. <laughs> 